Okay, we're doing GFX today. You know, all the cool looking 3D Roblox art that you see everywhere. It's pretty easy to make, so buckle up and get ready to make a fortune on Etsy. We're gonna need a plugin first. Start by heading over to the creator dashboard and installing an avatar loader plugin. They all work just fine, so just pick whichever one looks the coolest. Once that's done, hop over to Roblox Studio, go to the Plugins tab at the top of the menu, and select your avatar loader. Then, spawn an avatar by searching for player usernames. I'm just going to use the creator of the plugin, spawn the R6 version of the avatar, and try to get its position as close to 000 as possible, although it doesn't have to be perfect. This'll just make it easier to use the avatar in Blender. Now right click on the avatar model and click export selection. Nice! Give the file a nice memorable name and put it anywhere you want on your PC. Now, in a new Blender viewport, delete everything! Well, just the lighting, camera, and default cube. Then press File, Import, OBJ, and locate the file that you exported from Roblox Studio. This is why it was important to get the avatar close to the origin of Roblox Studio, otherwise it would have spawned way out in the distance when we imported it in Blender. Now uh, real quick, go to Material Preview Mode to spice up the model a bit. Now tab into Edit Mode and start separating the individual components of the avatar. By components, I mean like the arms, legs, and accessories. This can be done by selecting several faces of a component, Pressing Ctrl and L for linked selection, right clicking and hitting separate selection. Roblox Studio imports are a bit buggy and won't always select all the linked faces of a component, so you'll probably have to manually select some yourself. It can be useful to go into wireframe mode to see if any faces of a component aren't selected. I usually use this with the top faces of the legs because they overlap with the torso, so it can be kinda hard to tell if they're selected or not. Cool! Now press Shift A and add a camera. Move around your viewport window until you have a good camera view. Then, press Ctrl, Alt, and Numpad 0 to lock the camera's position to your position in the viewport. To move it around, I pressed G, Shift, and Z, and to rotate it, I pressed R and Z. Now in the Output Properties tab, mess around with the camera resolution until you get a ratio that looks good. I recommend spending a good amount of time on this part because the small details like the angle and the ratio of the camera can make a big difference in the final product. Now, we don't want this to happen when we pose our avatar. To fix it, right click on every component and set the origin to the geometry. Yeah, it's a little better. Oh yeah, recalculate those origins, baby! Now using the basic movement tool set on the left menu, give your character a sick looking pose. You can also access these tools using keybinds, which is what I used here. Something that I find useful is going to a top 2D view by pressing numpad 7 on your keyboard, because it makes it way easy to see if the avatar's body parts are too far forward or backward. To go back to the camera view, just press numpad 0. Now, go into rendered view and... that looks like hot garbage. Let's fix it. Press shift A and add in a sun, because you are an actual god. Under the light settings, mess around with the angle, color, and strength until you get a good environment lighting. Nice! Now under the render tab, go to film and select transparent. This will hide the background in the final rendered view. Let's also go over the different types of lights. They all have very self-explanatory settings, so I'm just going to explain what they do. Point lights are great for putting a concentrated area of light over a specific part of the scene. You can move them around freely in the viewport using the movement controls on the left. Next up we have spotlights. Again, they're very self-explanatory. They work exactly like spotlights in real life, just be sure you angle them properly. Combining the different types of light sources can give you a really visually appealing look. I did a test render of it with this guy, and it ended up looking really good. Ho ho ho, not bad at all. Lastly, we have the area light. It works similarly to a point light, except you can scale it and it can cover an entire flat surface with light. Lastly, I want to talk about environment lighting. Environments can add realistic light to your scene without using any of the previously mentioned lights. Start by heading over to polyhaven.com and go to HDRIs. Now download whichever one looks the coolest. Back in Blender, go to the Shading tab and change it from Object to World. Also, go to your Preferences, then Add-ons, and search for the Node Wrangler add-on, and make sure it's enabled. Now with the background node selected, you can just press Ctrl T. For the environment texture, open up your downloaded HDRI. Under Film, make sure you turn Transparent off and go back to the rendered view. And just like that, you saved yourself the trouble of spending 7 hours making a background. Back in the Shader Editor, you can move around the Z rotation of the mapping node to change the angle of the environment. Once I was happy with the angle, of mine, I added in a spotlight to mimic some extra sunlight. I did a quick render and it looked pretty good. You can also hide the background if you just want the lighting from the HDRI. Even with the HDRI hidden, you can still rotate it to change the angle of the lighting, which is pretty cool. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you all learned something and have a fantastic rest of your day.